All right, hello and welcome to part 14, I think, of Hotline Miami Clone in Unity tutorial. And today we are doing, uh, I think it's high scores for levels and the related menu stuff. And it'll like, so it saves, as you can see from the little bit here, it's just a debug thing that says it's managed to load the files. And it also has a level exiting, so I'll show you. So play. you can see we've got high scores, we've got a bit of GI code, so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to quickly run through. We've got a van there to exit the game for, uh, map from once we're done. And I will explain all how it works after. So we have killed every enemy. Let's get rid of that now, we don't need the gun. Uh, just have a glitchy elevator ride. And you can see... Once I get near it, the, the doors on the van are now open, and if we walk into it, it takes us back to the main menu. And you can see that we got high scores and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to show you the code now. Uh, first, I'm going to show you the van, just quickly. Uh, testing, that was the level, wasn't it? Yeah. So basically, the van's in two parts. It's got a box glider on it, well, and like a trigger, which is just basically what triggers when you walk into it, when the uh, all the enemies are dead. And it's got a, a scrape script, and there is a separate collider that just blocks you from uh, walking into the van when you've not killed all the enemies. That's deleted when it's done, so I'll show you these scripts for that. So basically it stores the collider that blocks you off from escaping when you've not killed all the enemies and the van itself. Uh, we've got the sprite for the doors open on the van, the sprite render of the van and the game object to the right of all the enemies in the level which is just found by looking for the game tag object, a game object with the tag enemy. And it has the method are all enemies dead, which is used for the it's basically the same as the enemies uh, the elevator script version of this, where it'll just check uh, if all the enemies tag is tag all the enemies game object tag are is dead. Then if that's the case, it'll return true. Else it'll return false if it finds even one with that's not dead. And it's when you kill an enemy, it's set to dead for tag instead of enemy. But they'll still stay in the uh, array of game objects, so it'll be fine. Uh, then, if then it checks if all enemies are dead, and the sprite's not the door open sprite, then it'll open the car. So it destroys the collider that blocks you off and sets the sprite to the door open version of the van. And it's great; it's got an untrigger enter. So if the player triggers the thing to the trigger glider on the thing on the uh, van which I showed you uh, there so that one then it'll basically just go to the it'll get the menu screen it'll find it in the screen because we've done some stuff to that which I'll show you in a minute it'll, it's got I added a save high score method so it'll save that it'll then display the menu and load the menu the actual menu screen up okay so now, one little thing I added in the menu screen here was, I think, uh, I had a little change about with these, just so I could add in the uh, high score display on the menu screen. So these might have changed, like mainly the height, but aside from that it's pretty much normal. Uh, now we've got so a static public menu screen. MU, which basically just it keeps a uh, reference to the menu and so you can just access it. We've got a current level. Yeah, current level is new as well. So that's the current level that's loaded, I think. I think that's used still, but whatever. And we've got on a week, it'll check if the static MU is null, then it'll just assign it to this. And it'll say, even when we load another scene, we don't want to destroy the game object that the menu is attached to. Which, as we saw from that, I can just load the menu. It's literally just, this is the menu object. So see, it's got the tag menu that it'll search for. 
and menu screen script and it's got the levels as child objects. Okay. So yeah, that's it. And on start it has check for level unlocked, which is a new thing. And basically we got a save high score. So basically it uses the current level, which is assigned when, I think it's when we play. Yeah, it'll assign, the current level is assigned when you switch between levels, well, like with A and D and that. Oh shit, I should probably not delete that. So it'll just, it stores the name of the current level it's loaded. I think the level name is the one that it displays in the uh, GUI rather than the scene manager. Yeah. So it uses that to work out which level to save the, uh, which level to save the data to. So it'll like, it, uh, it'll just assign the level, when it finds the level that's currently been loaded when you called the save high score, it'll basically just assign it to the level to LS, the level data store, which we made last time. And then it'll get the score and write the score to uh, for that level to the file. It ha I, I wrote some file writing. It's like basically a uh, script methods to save the uh, score basically in the level store now, which I will show you in a minute. Uh, I've also got a check for level unlocked, which basically just checks if the last element before, if the level before it in the array has a score, a high score of more than zero, then it'll be, it'll unlock the next one. Just so we don't have to uh, save data on the level unlocked state as well, which would be more complex to work out. But, uh, uh, well, <sighs> it's early and I'm tired. I think that was everything on the menu screen. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so level store has two new methods. It's save, which takes an integer of a new high score, and load, which doesn't. So basically we have a path, new value as a string, which is path, which is the path that it'll save the folder to, the, f the save data to, of the high score. And basically it, what it is, is made up of application.persistent data path, which is literally just uh, an area on the computer where Unity can write files uh, to do the game that it'll want to load again. So it has write permissions for it. And that's just basically the location. Then it has a slash to create a new folder. Then to create unique ones for each level, it uses the level name, which is the unique one that's displayed in the inspector uh, on, on the menu, rather than the scene manager name, which is just to locate the uh, actual scene file in the assets folder, and use scoredata.dat. Now you will have to avoid using uh, identical names for level name, but otherwise that will come up with a bug, and it'll just load the first one it finds. Uh, so save, uh, but before we go, we get, basically it uses uh, system.runtime.serialization, these basically, it uses these to write and read from files. So you have to import these packages. Sorry, very professional here, Anna. Uh, and basically, when you call save, it'll assign the score that's been passed into the high score value for the level. Then it'll just assign the path again, just in case it didn't have it the first time, because they're persistent, it only gets called start once, so just in case. Uh, you know, and basically it creates a new level high score, which we have here, which needs the serializable tag above it, and it just needs a method. Not method, integer, that's the one high score. And Basically, it sets the high score in the new data thing we have to high score. Then it uses a binary formatter and a file stream to create a file 
that at the path location, so it'll create a file called say level one score dot data dot dat in that little folder. And then we use the binary formatter to serialize the data and the file because we've got it as serializable. So it'll just write the file and then we close it and then it'll save the file, the path. And then it's a similar thing for loading. So it'll get the check, make sure the path is correct. Then it'll check if there is a file at uh, the path. So it'll open the file. So it uses a binary formatter again and opens a file stream to open the path file at path because it's found it. And then it turns the data it's got into the fat from file when opening the file back into the level high score, which is just an integer. And then it just assigns the high score in the actual level store from what it pulled out of the file and it'll close the file. But if it can't find the uh, file from the past, so this will assume, say, it was the first time booting up the game and there weren't files written, it'll save the, it'll save it again with a high score of zero. So, because you won't have played it before. So it'll write the file, then it'll reload it just to make sure it exists. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, I don't think I had anything else in this, no? Okay, so I'm going to just quickly show you the new stuff. I don't know if I imported anything. No, I didn't. Okay, so we've got the save high score method. Check for levels unlocked, which is called every time you press D or A to switch through levels, just to make sure that it's there. And all the levels have been made, checked, unlocked. Uh, player health hasn't changed. We've got the level store, so we've got the three new imports here. We've got the save method and the load method and the serializable level high score. We've got the level escape controller. And the other way it hasn't changed. So yeah, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. And yeah, go play loud or quiet. It's on itch.io now. Well, not fully, but you know, there's a version of it on there. I've been improving it, so look out for a video later that week, later this week, sorry, of what I've been improving on it. Uh, bye.